you know, as, as a self-identified lesbian who was also editing the nation's largest lesbian publication at the time, there was a lot of, you know, both our own concerns about acceptance and other people's concerns about, you know, well, what does it mean now that you are with a man and can you still call yourself a lesbian? Can mm -hmm. you still represent us in magazines? Mm -hmm. Can you still do these things? Mm -hmm. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, I think that that was, uh, it was a little bit of a concern. In fact, we did go to, we'd also uh, just done a book deal for our first, we write novels together as mm -hmm. well. And mm -hmm. so, um, so we've had several novels, uh, mystery novels together. And so we just got our first book deal, and at the same time I was editing Curve Magazine, which is still the largest uh, lesbian publication in the world, I think, at this wow. point. Um, and uh, so we went to both of our publishers and said, uh, for my magazine publisher, Frances Stevens, she was very lovely, and I said, do you need me to resign? Or am I going to lose my job? Or... Wow. Does, do we need to stay in the closet about this? We weren't mm. looking forward to the possibility of going back into the closet, mm. but we both considered it. Like it was, it was like a you know better than losing your career, right? right. At that moment, you right. know, we were trying to make make do, and um, and she was like, oh my God, no, you know, like we love you and we uh, and and we love him, and um, and you're still the best person to run this magazine. Wow. So I don't care what's happening. You know, That's great. And, and so our, that was really good. For and our then, book publisher, I was the first non-lesbian, first man that they had, man. had uh, had on contract. So wow. that was a big thing. But she was also was very accepting. She said, "I believe, I believe my audience will go with it." I, I, she was like, "I don't that. know. I don't know I don't how know, people will react. I don't know what sales yeah. will be like. But right. I, you know, we believe in our yeah. readers." And, right. Yeah, that's great. Now, so then, um, I, and that's that's an incredible just testament to yeah. to her and to the publication. I'm curious about just in your personal lives. Did you have uh, blowback uh, individually for you in terms of just uh, uh, the lesbian community, lesbian okay. friends, or, this is the or for you part. as a couple? Like, yeah. No, this is actually a funny story, not actually about friends, but I always have to tell it because. Um, there's this adage when you come out as trans that the people you think are going to be supportive won't be mm -hmm. and the people that you won't think will be. Mm -hmm. And it came out to be kind of true for us, so it was really interesting. But right. one of the people who was really concerned was Jacob's mom. Uh -huh. and, um, and she said, no. You know, that was the first thing, was like, no, don't buy it. I don't buy it. I and, don't think this is true for you. Right. And so yeah. what she did was send... A, uh, a quiz that was a male brain, how to determine whether you have a male brain or a female brain. Uh -huh. It was like multiple pages, like a scientific survey. Jake had to fill out this giant evaluation form and then send it back to her. And, uh, <coughs> excuse me, and, um, and you know, a lot of the questions I was like, well, he had the same answer I did. And we were just like, uh, <laughs> we were both like, I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be the male yeah. brain, but uh, whatever. Uh, anyway, <laughs> and then she, uh, and anyway, so he sent it back to her and we never heard about it again. And yeah. she never told him she wasn't trans anymore. Uh, yeah. So it oh. worked. Yeah. Wow. So then, so then your mom has not accepted you? Is no, that? she has. She has. Oh, now. Yeah, she absolutely. came right around. Oh, yeah, she okay. came around. Oh, I see. And, okay. You yeah. know, I mean, the first thing, actually, one of the things that, that was interesting was the all the women that I told I was transitioning all said, how can you do that to Diane? Right. And all the men said, yeah, great, of course. You know, whatever. Uh -huh. like, the men hey, in my family, me. like yeah. my dad... Who, yeah. uh, you know, is a little... No, hetero men, gay men, or both? Hetero. Oh, the hetero uh, guys, yeah. I mean, we had a lot of hetero guys, like my, my dad, which totally surprised us. You know, he was like, congratulations. Yeah. And we realized oh. for a lot of the, like, you know, guys, they were like, well, of course you want to be a man. Why wouldn't you? Yeah. Well, now, that, so that leads me kind of in a way to my next question, which is, okay, so you both have this life where you've both identified as, as you know, as being lesbian and yeah. being in that world and... And then being a couple, lesbian couple, and then all of a sudden, here you are, by all intents and purposes, on the outside, in the appearance, heteronormative. Nobody would necessarily know, if I just yeah. met you on the street, I wouldn't necessarily know that you were trans at all. Yeah. And so, have you have you discovered, like, are there little, I'm just so curious as a gay man, uh -huh. and, and that can pass, you know, in that yeah, way, uh -huh, and I get uh -huh. away with it a lot. 
and I also have white privilege. I have all these privileges. Mm -hmm. But what are the hetero normative privileges that you might experience because suddenly you're walking around as a normal couple? I was so kidding. uncomfortable with that at first because the first six months, basically, I over explained everything to every service worker that yeah. we met. For example, <laughs> this is a true story. I was at like, you know, Albertsons or one of the grocery stores and the woman said, oh, nice blouse. And I said, oh, thank you. It was a gift for my husband, except he used to be a woman because I'm a lesbian. Still a lesbian. <laughs> right? And she just looked completely baffled. And, um, but I did that to everybody oh for six whole months oh and God. stuff. And they were all like, yeah. oh my God, what is this woman talking about? Um, so, so we definitely overcompensated at first. We were like, queer, 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 you know, yeah. and everywhere it's still we were. But like, not being recognized. That's, yeah. You know, like, I, I will still, like, you know, nod at lesbians and they don't. See they think me. you're just some guy. Yeah. yeah. A lot of times women yeah, will just cross some guy the hitting, them them now, hitting on right. them or something. Right. So, yeah. Yeah, definitely. But yeah. I think but. that, you know, in the public sphere, I think people understand that um, that we're very much involved with the LGBT right. world right. And, right. and that we both ID as queer and, and stuff well, like that. But yeah, guys, in the street. But hetero marriage. privileges, yeah, the, the heteronormative privileges happened the day after. Right. And because uh, we had both only been in uh, adult relationships with other women, right. uh, even before we'd gotten together, we didn't even realize what we were missing. So, right. like, you know, when we were a lesbian couple, we had to, you know, with your credit card company, you know how you have to have paperwork saying they can talk with your partner right. and all that kind of stuff. And so we had all that paperwork on file. And uh, and so it was always a rig rigmarole where I'd be like, yes, it's my partner. Yes, I have her social security. Right. Yes, I can talk. This time, uh, we actually we did a, a vow renewal ceremony. We got legally married in the right. state of California because this was we had been one of the Prop 8 couples kicked right. out and stuff uh, pre Prop 8. So in this particular case, the day after that, I called a change of form. I called the credit card company and I said one word different, husband instead of wife. Right. They gave me complete access, didn't even to ask everything. me anything. You know, it's so funny because Tony and I were just re recently renting a car mm -hmm. and something happened and we went, oh, well, we want to have the additional driver. Mm -hmm. And then it was like, you know, and then the guy at the counter, Enterprise, said, oh, well, spouse, as I always, my spouse, spouses automatically get you know, uh, for free, and I was like, wow, wow all those lovely. years I yeah. could have had that $25 <laughs> that they lovely. never gave us, right. mm -hmm. and it's like stuff like that that you yeah. don't even know the doors that are you opening for you. You don't realize what you're missing. Yeah. Uh, that's the wildest thing, uh, that happens with Tony, Tony and I recently rented a car, and then this thing happened at the counter where the Enterprise guy all of a sudden said, oh, well... I think Tony said, oh, well, we're a, a couple because we want to add him as an extra driver. Right. And he said, oh, well, spouses don't have to pay that $25. And that's when we, we were like, oh, my God, all those years we paid the $25. Right, right, exactly. And it's that weird thing where doors are opening for you, you and you don't even know. So it's a fascinating thing. I want to just acknowledge you guys as role models for so many. And you've written this book, Queerly Beloved. A love story across genders uh, yeah, from and, Bold Strokes books. Okay, good, and I think it's but it's really it's really remarkable because I think uh, it's a wonderful thing to see that people can go through the yeah. transition and that you can stay together. And what a what a beautiful story. Thank you. Thank you for Thank sharing. Thank you. Thanks for having us. And what's so amazing is uh, staying together, not just um, you know, not just like Diane said, you know, that there this transition. I definitely changed it externally, but I was so I was the kind of feminist that actually really believed that men and women are different solely because we're raised different. Like uh -huh. you know, from the moment you're born, people start putting you in one of these boxes over here or there, and I was so unprepared for the kind of changes I went through on testosterone. Uh -huh. Like my personality changed, how I experience emotions changed, all of these things like changed that were so surprising. And that, I think, has probably been the hardest part of actually dealing with my change has been... Yes, you've heard of lesbian processing, where you stay up all night yeah. talking about stuff. Yeah, that doesn't happen once one of you takes testosterone. But it's so funny because it's that... It's gone when you're that, not lesbian that, that, together. That proves anymore. to me that you're now a heterosexual guy as opposed to a gay guy, because I love to process. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right, there you go. So that's what Witness it is. Test. Yeah, so anyway, thanks a lot, you thanks. guys. And, thanks. And, and please, people, uh, get, get the book because it's a great, I think it's a great chance to... You can check it out at queerly, www.queerlybelovedbook.com yeah. as well or as our publisher at queerlybeloved.us Okay, and thanks for watching Watch Hollywood TV. Watch Hollywood TV.